Socialism and communism are extremely similar. One could be forgiven for thinking they are the same political theory. Socialism and communism call for the end of social classes. And even though communism and socialism are linked in some ways, there are some nuanced differences. Communism is a system where the working class own everything, where there is no wealthy or poor, bourgeois, nor proletariat. Everyone has equal wealth and everyone has equal worth. Because communism takes away motivation for working, this creates a society that is very unproductive. The working class, who have always been undefined, redistribute the resources and rather than pay workers, they invest some money into sectors like healthcare and schooling. Everyone gets a home to live in and everyone gets food to eat. Nothing less than they need, nothing more. Socialism, on the other hand, does permit monetary revenue for the working class. Though, like communism, workers only get what they need to survive. In socialism, the government owns a means for production. Workers receive what they need to survive, but there is no motivation to work harder again, making the workplace unmotivating and dreams unrealizable. These two systems are used to enslave a people while championing the cause of freedom, flipping freedom from the power or right to act, speak or think as one wants to, to instead mean being able to live the same life as everyone else. This is the Marxism that teaches champion. And it gets worse. There has never been a Marxist regime that works. Call it Marxism, call it communism, call it socialism, or maybe even fascism. It has never worked and never will. Let's try a place that you would never think used communism. In 1609, Virginia used this kind of communist living, and it was a huge factor in the starvation of the people, leading to the death of 78% of the population of Virginia by 1616. Each person contributed to the fruit of his labor. According to his ability to a common storehouse run by the London Company, and from this common store, each received produce according to his needs. Everyone gained only a negligible amount of good from his own effort and hence had little incentive to work. This lack of incentive was doubly reinforced by the fact that the colonist was assured, regardless of how much or how well he had worked, of an equal share of goods from the common store. Under such conditions, not even death and starvation for the group was enough to provide the necessary spur for them. This is only one regime that did not work. Castro, Hitler, Stalin and Mao all tried and failed. If it were not for the abandonment of these principles, America as we know it would not exist. This would have been detrimental to the world in many ways. One of the ways would be slavery. People would still be practicing slavery today. So thank God that the settlers were smarter than that.